we can have all the cable in the world perfectly laid out and ready to go. But until we get it connected to our gear that needs it, it's not doing too much good to anybody. So in this video, I'd like to chat with you about those last mile connections or those connections from the media to our devices and also some details regarding the pinouts used with unshielded twisted pair. So let's kick it off with the most common implementation of our cabling, and that is unshielded twisted pair. So this is an RJ45 connector. It has eight pins, one for each of the eight wires that make up from the four pairs of wires. And then as far as the four pairs of wires go, there is an orange and orange white, blue and blue white, a green, green white, and brown, brown white. And each of those pairs is specifically twisted a certain number of twists per foot to help reduce something called crosstalk. And that's how they can get away without having to use foil around the outside to help protect signal. So even though uh, it's not immune from interference and so forth, having the appropriate number of twists, and you get that when you buy the right cable, like Cat6 cable is gonna have it all by default, that's gonna help have reliable signals on your computer networks. So let's tackle the question, which wires from these pairs go to which pins on this RJ45 connector? And to help us answer that question, I am going to enlist the help of Fosco. This is uh, fiberopticsforsale.com. So CBT Nuggets nor myself are affiliated with them, but it looks like they have a great site that's going to be very useful as we talk about those pins and those UTP cables. So with the attribution given there, let me go ahead and scroll down. So there's our unshielded twisted pair with eight wires made up of four pairs. If we continue to scroll down, it talks about the details of each of those wires in the pairs. And if we take a close look at the each of these wires, we can see that it's not just one wire. <laughs> it's actually stranded wire in each of those wires. And that makes it resilient and more reliable, more robust. You can bend it and it's not very likely going to break. If it was just one wire and you bent it and that one wire broke, that cable, if it's a wire that you're currently using on your network, <laughs> like pins one, two, three, or six, it would no longer be very functional. And if we continue to scroll down, here's talking about the categories of cables. It goes up to category six, but we also know there's category seven and category eight, which can support 10 gig. And also cat seven and cat eight also involve that foil shielding as well to help pull off some of their magic. And here's talking about the color codes for the wires. So here are wires number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And the first pair is blue and blue white. And the second pair is orange and orange white. And then third is green and green white, and the fourth pair is brown and brown white. And as we continue to scroll down, it then walks through some of the details regarding actually terminating or putting that RJ45 connector at the end of that cable. So we might be putting on the female portion of the RJ45 connector, the RJ45 jack, inside of an office or a cube, and then the actual customer would use a patch cable with an RJ45 connector to go ahead and connect into it. So the key is we want to make sure we have all the pins correctly matched up for the cable so that it works. So the next question we get to answer is which wires connect to which pins when we actually punch this down and make the connection. And that's based on these two standards, 568A and 568B. And there's a beautiful graphic right here of exactly that. And here's what I wish somebody had told me like 25 years ago. I'm sure it was out there, but we didn't have the internet back then. So it wasn't really obvious, but it boils down to this. If we are connecting devices like a PC and we're connecting it over to a switch. The cable type we're going to want to have here is a straight through cable. And that way, when the PC uses a pair of wires to send, the switch is expecting to receive on the, that corresponding pair. And when the switch is sending on a different pair, the PC is expecting to receive on that different pair. It's a match made in heaven, a straight through cable. Now, to get a straight through cable, which standard are we going to use? And the answer is this you're gonna use the same one on both sides. So if this is a straight through cable, like a patch cable, we could use T568A on this end of the cable and T568A on that end of the cable. <laughs> and boom, you get a straight through cable. And the same is true for this one. If we had this switch here, which was connected to a server. And again, this unshielded twisted pair run would need to be less than 100 meters total. And if we used T568B on this side and T568B on this side of that cable, of that patch cable, that would also be a straight through cable. So if we need a crossover cable, all we're really doing is using a T65A on one side and T568B on the other side. Another way of thinking about this is instead of having one to one and two to two and three to three and six to six, 
which is a straight through cable right there. Instead, we're just going to have one go to three and two go to six on both sides. <laughs> and effectively, that's our crossover. So if you follow all the pins, a straight through cable is pin one to one, two to two, three to three, six, six. And the others are all matched up too, but these are the ones we use for sending and receiving data. And a crossover cable is simply swapping one to three and two to six respectively on both sides. So if you do the math and look at these two connections back to back, and we can do it as an example, uh, pin one over here goes to pin three over here, which it does. And pin two should go to six, which it does. And the same thing on the other side. So one will go to three and two will go to six. And there you have your crossover cable. And also, as I mentioned in a previous video with the MDI-X, it'll automatically sense what type of device it's connected to and what signals are being sent. And many switches today have built in that auto flip over feature. So whether you use a straight through cable or a crossover cable, most switches will make up the difference and they'll just continue to work based on that automatic feature, sensing the signals and then using the correct pins to send and receive. But to be clear, in an environment where you don't have auto MDX going on, if you have like devices, they need a crossover cable. So what do I mean by like devices? Well, things like two PCs, <laughs> that would, they would need a crossover cable. Uh, two switches, they would need a crossover cable. Two routers, back to back. So normally our devices are all connecting to a switch. So maybe that's a router, here's a PC, here's a printer. So normally we'd have straight through cables everywhere. And anytime you're gonna connect two like devices, like two printers together, or two PCs together, or two routers back to back together, or two switches, that's when you need a crossover cable. Which, going back to our wiring diagram, would be one side looking like this pinout and the other side looking like that, which effectively maps pin one on one side to pin three on the other and vice versa, and pin two on one side to pin six on the other side and vice versa. So next, let's take a look at fiber optic cables, whether it's single mode or multi-mode, and identify what we need to do to get them connected into our network gear. And for this discussion, let me bring back this device here. So this has, <laughs> I'm lifting up my power supply too. So this has multiple ethernet connectors right here. This is, these are RJ45 connectors for unshielded twisted pair ja uh, RJ45 jacks they plug in there. It's got another one right here. And then this port right here is kind of a generic port. And here's the deal. We're going to take our cable that we want to connect to this gear. And then we're going to have to have an adapter, the appropriate adapter based on this model of hardware and the type of cable we're going to connect it to that allows us to connect this physical hardware to the cabling that we want to use. And the great thing about standards is there's so many to choose from. So if we look at the ends of these fiber cables, these are all terminated. That's why that's how I buy my cables is I buy them already terminated unless you have the uh, relatively expensive gear to actually terminate your own ends on the fiber. So a lot of times they're sold with them being pre-terminated. But look, we've got uh, several different connector types here. And to get them connected into our network gear, we're going to have to use some type of an adapter or converter like this that goes in our network gear that's compatible with the type of connector we're using on the fiber optic cable. So to help elaborate on this, we're gonna leverage uh, a vendor and that is showmecables.com. Again, not affiliated with me or CBT Nuggets, but looks like they've got some great products and they've also got a great diagram of several connector types right here on their page. So here they have them labeled from left to right. So here's the FC connector. This is the LC connector, and I'll give you a really sh good shortcut here in a moment to help remember these. This is the SC connector, and this is the ST connector. So this is kind of old. We're not going to see those too much anymore on new gear. But basically, there's one fiber optic cable there on the left and one on the right, and you'd simply uh, connect them and, and twist them in or screw them on to the actual interface or on the adapter that's on your switch or router for that connectivity. Also, this part right here, this <laughs> these little tips here, those are just plastic protectors to help keep the dust off until they're ready to be used. So the actual plastic piece there on the end isn't really part of the technical piece. It's just a protective cover to help keep the dust out. And the next one here is an LC. Now, the way I remember LC is because it is little. It's like a little connector. And let me see if I can get that in focus. There we go. So see how cute it is? Oh, little cute little connector. It's gonna be hard. To, it's gonna be hard to forget that one. So that's the LC, the little connector, and that's gonna connect into an SFP or an adapter that then goes into our networking gear. So LC, the way I remember it, is it's a little connector. 
And the next one is called the SC connector. And here's how I remember the SC. It's stick and click. And, <laughs> and let me show you why that's going to be easy to remember as well. So just for a size comparison, there's the LC, the little connector. And here's our stick and click. And so we're going to uh, connect this to our networking gear. This is a little adapter for it. You basically push it in, click. <laughs> and that's how I remember that. You stick and click. There's no screwing involved. It's not cute and little. It's just like normal size. And that's how I remember the name for that type of connector, an SC. A stick until it clicks. Stick and click. And this last one, ST, the way I remember it, is stick because you're gonna you're gonna stick it onto the adapter, and then instead of waiting for a click, you're actually going to twist it. So that's not why it's called ST, but that's a great way to remember it. So it kind of looks like the original FC, which is old school, but they are smaller. So the cute teeny one is the little connector. The bigger one that you push until it clicks is stick and click, and then we have the stick and twist. Now. Just, you know, in all truth be told, the, the LC also clicks into place, but it's teeny. So whenever you see that really teeny one, just think, oh, that little connector. <laughs> and that'll help you remember the actual labels for those types of connectors for fiber optic cables. So now that we've taken a look at some of the pinouts for unshielded twisted pair and some of the more common termination points for fiber optic cables, in the next video, I'd like to chat with you about some of the adapters that we can use to connect to the cables that would then connect into our network gear. And I'll see you in the next video for exactly that.